We're at this event getting stuff ready for the freshmen and we hear some music in the sanctuary and instead of hanging out in the lobby uh, we decided to go and enjoy the music that was being played. So we walked in, we kind of sat in the back, and at the end of the band practice, um, Ryan came back to say hi um, as he saw Kaylee's a familiar face. And Kaylee went on and introduced um, Sarah and I to Ryan. And so that's kind of when the whole love story started to develop. When Ryan first came and asked me, Jer, what do you think about Sarah Dundon? I laughed pretty hard. You see, I have a lot of conversations with young men, and this is the classic question they ask when they think a chick is really hot. After we got past the laughing, I told Ryan that I thought she was out of his league and that he should count it a true blessing if she'd even go out on a date with him. I told Ryan that I thought Sarah, while a flawed and imperfect woman, was possibly one of the most fantastic women I've ever met, this side of my wife, of course. I've also told Sarah that Ryan is probably the perfect man for her and that he's the man that she's dreamt about and hoped for since she was a little girl. Ryan started coming to the coffee shop that I worked at and um, he was just stopping by and I just thought it was on his way. He told me it was on his way from work. Um, I came all the way out to Holt and asked her out and was really nervous and I had my hands in my pocket. I was probably playing with my keys and said something awkward like, hey, I don't know if you just maybe want to, you know, hang out some time, that we can grab coffee, maybe? Is that something you like? Um, yeah, tea? No, you like tea? Oh. He asked me if I wanted to go to coffee with him, and I said, I'm sorry, I'm really busy. And he said, okay, how about any time um, next week? And I said, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just really busy. And he's like, oh, okay. And he, um... <laughs> He left. I was I was so devastated. I'm just kidding. It was really hard. I couldn't take it. Uh, I was super frustrated and really crushed because I had um, I really liked Sarah at this point and it was really hard for me to go there and ask her out. So that Ryan Stringer, he like he asked me out on a coffee, like asked me out for coffee. I don't know if I really want to go because that that's kind of like a date, and I'm not, you know, I don't I'm not really interested in looking for a guy right now. So like I don't want to lead him on or anything. I think I'm gonna have to say no, or I don't, I'm not really sure what to do about this. Well then, Andy Black uh, just told me that I needed to man up and grow a pair and not let that hinder me. So I decided to find out a way to hang out with Sarah that was in a neutral environment that wasn't a date and be able to hang out. Basically I told him, dude, just man up and ask her out. Like, if you, you obviously like this girl, so just do it. And, and he's like, yeah, I should. And he did. He asked Sarah, um, hey, do you want to go around and fundraise together? We were both going to uh, Monterey for the spring break trip with Epic the following spring. And so I asked Sarah if she would go fundraising with me. It's like, hey, we've got to give these letters to these businesses. Do you want to go do that together? And she said yes. And I was like, all right, cool. He asked if um, I wanted to go with him to go support raise for our trip. And I figured if I didn't go with him, now then I would never end up going alone so um, I agreed to go support raising with them and we sat and talked in the car for probably about three hours and that's when I realized that he was a pretty interesting and good guy. So that to Sarah wasn't a date because they had a mission and they were doing it um, for this upcoming trip. So we got to spend three and a half hours in the car together and we got to talk and just get to know each other better and that was amazing to be able to get to know her heart. I was falling even more in love with her every second that I was seeing her and um, that was awesome. That was a really cool chance to see where our heart was at. She was already really pretty but seeing that just really like blew me away, the kind of woman that she was. When we were going support raising with the businesses, I was really impressed by Ryan just being very forward and outgoing and talking to them about what we were doing in Mexico. 
Um, it had been um, a big part of my heart and it was just really cool to see him get so excited about something that he had never really been a part of. He just heard that it was a good thing and he was just all, all for back-to-back -back ministries and I don't know, I just thought that was really cool. We found out that we both really loved the idea of going on missions. We spent a lot of time talking about that and where our hearts are at with God and what we really wanted to do with our lives. Sarah um, and I had lots of conversations about um, how she was, just seemed really interested in Ryan and um, oh he's like, he wants to go into um, the medical field and he's really interested in missions and like and, th and that's close to my heart too and so it seemed like they both had um, a lot of common interests and they were all um, pointed towards towards um, growing their relationship in God and, and staying um, strong as followers of Christ. I told myself I wasn't gonna cry, Sarah, I'm trying. <laughs> We organized a trip to go, to go to Silver Bells, well Audrey and I did. Ryan went and we kind of hung out in safe proximity of each other. We are always like kind of close and in the same pictures, like smiling together like that, but it wasn't anything major, I guess. I don't remember exactly what she was wearing, but I remember that she was really pretty. And I was really nervous, but really excited to be able to spend time with her. And I just was trying not to screw anything up at that point because she already said no to me once, and I was really sensitive. Afterwards, we went to Audrey's house, and um, we were sitting on the couch to watch Elf with all the 15 other people that were there. Um, I had a different guy sitting next to me, at, and um, he got up to go... I think he spilled a drink or something and he had to go, go get up to like wash himself off and Ryan like jumped up on the couch and sat next to me and um, so it was me, Ryan, another guy and we were all sitting on the couch watching Elf and um, since it was we had just gotten out of the cold we had a giant blanket across the whole couch and Ryan and I, Ryan and I had um, our arms on it, our sides like middle school children and um, like both both wanting to hold hands and no one wanting to do anything and um, Ryan all of a sudden put his like two fingers over my two fingers like this and I remember just sitting there watching the movie like staring straight ahead like what in the world is he doing <laughs> and um, I, I couldn't handle that much of the awkwardness so a minute probably passed and I just held his hand like that and we both didn't say anything to each other we just both like were looking straight ahead and talking to everyone else but not each other and that's pretty much how the night ended we were just like okay bye <laughs> so the next day Ryan was going to leave for Honduras and we spent a little bit of time together and then he left for a week after we had spent so much time together over the weekend and I didn't hear really anything from him the whole week except in the middle of the week he sent me a poem about basically alluding to um, me being someone that God clearly showed him and that made me feel like oh good that that was actually something that happened this past weekend it wasn't just a blip and so he came back and we kind of started dating um, we decided to define our relationship start date as the night we awkwardly held hands I don't I think it um, wasn't quite on December 1st her party but anyways we're um, hanging out and Sarah's off talking to a, a, another group of friends and Ryan comes up to me and he said Audrey I am just digging Sarah <laughs> and that like <laughs> Nerd that alert. picture I will be in my mind forever <laughs> just um, like the language that he used and um, it, it was so funny that he was like so blunt and clear to me, her best friend, who's obviously going to tell her about what he said to me. Um, when Ryan and I first started dating, we spent a lot of time talking together. We really needed to catch each other up on the past 20 plus years of each other's lives. And honestly, like every night we probably stayed up till at least 2 or 3 a.m. talking, sometimes 5, 6 and sometimes I had to be to work at 6 a.m. that morning and so I would just be dragging and drinking espresso at work. After that they started spending all sorts of time together. 
I'd call Sarah, you know, I'm supposed to know where she is every minute because I'm her best girlfriend. And she was just off hanging, hanging out with Ryan all the time. They just found little stuff to do together and study here and there. The first month of our dating relationship, we decided to go and contact JR and Trisha Miller um, and just say, like, hey, we've been in some messed up relationships before and we really want to do this right. So would you just kind of, like, meet with us every once in a while and guide us through these um rough waters of figuring out how to do a long-term relationship we want to date for the intention of marriage someday. Um, we don't want to just mess around with another relationship for no purpose. And so they said yes, and it's been an awesome, awesome relationship and friendship that we've set up with them. Um, they've been a phenomenal resource when we have had challenging times and great friends. Brad and I went with a group of people to back to back Mexico and I had interned there the summer previously so it was really cool to have Ryan there and just experience things that I had experienced. It was just really cool to see him like play with the kids that I had a huge love for and to see him like so excited about a ministry that I'm really excited about. <laughs> we um, were dating for six months before I had to leave for Nigeria for three months and it was super hard just preparing to leave. It was ridiculously devastating for me to know that Sarah was going to be leaving for the entire summer. I did not know what to do with myself. I kept my cool, and I was just like, yeah, that's cool, very awesome. Like, you're going to leave for the entire summer. Um, sweet. God bless you. <laughs> Ryan and I both went to Nigeria um, the spring break after I went for the summer. The spring of 2010 was awesome to be able to go to Nigeria, um, to see the places that she was staying, to see the um, buildings that she had helped to construct, to see the kids that she had built into, to see the roads that she had traveled, and all the stories that she told me and finally get a picture for that was just phenomenal. The memorable moments that we had were just, just sitting up with the kids, um, sitting on these couple um, rocks again, just overlooking the back-to-back -back property and just having kids talking to each other in their language and not really knowing what's being said, but just having our quiet time with God. There were multiple times when I saw Sarah serving with the kids over there and being up on the rolling hills just doing quiet time and spending time with her serving the missionaries that were there and um, just living the life that it seemed like we would one day live as a missionary couple um, if we were going to be married. And it's at that trip that I really felt like I had found my wife. I had been convinced that there that I would never find anyone that had the heart for the world like Sarah did, who believed in so many things like I did, who um, became my best friend so quickly. I first expected Ryan to ask me to marry him. Um right when I got off the plane from Nigeria, to be honest. I kind of gave up January 2010 thinking about that. Um, I had asked her what she likes in rings generally and somehow gotten an idea about the particular style that she would kind of like, but we hadn't gone ring shopping yet. And I had been trying to kind of like put blinders over her eyes to um, make her think that I wasn't really going to propose and that I was just kind of like winging it with the relationship and that we weren't really going in a solid direction. We were just kind of like, you know, hanging out and trying to make her second guess what was really going on. Sarah and I saw each other. We had, we had like class together four days a week and then we would see each other at church on the weekends. So we're always seeing, always together. Um, and it seemed, somehow it seemed like all of our conversation kind of like went back to I don't think he's ever going to propose, um, and she, we always talked about, oh, guess what, Audrey, we had another DTR last night, a what we like to say is define the relationship, and so she's like, so he says, like, maybe we won't get, be able to get married till this time, and I don't know if I can wait that long, like, I think we should just do it, what's that for? I was shaking my head, no. <laughs> Come on, Ryan. <laughs> And, um...